Hey boys and girls, guess what time it is? It's tubing time. No, not the kind of tubing you're thinking of, where you get on a raft and you go tubing. I don't know if you're familiar with that. A lot of kids do that. It's head tubing time. I'll show you why. Have these uh, world product heads, and these are for the 1955 Chevy uh that we're doing up the two lane blacktop tribute car sort of kind of uh that's what it is with my son spent on it he's making a 55 chevy the way he wants it and it has that uh kind of a scenario to it with the scoop and the way it looks the wheel wells and the whole nine yards so if you guys haven't seen that check it out on adam's channel and um yeah here we go these royal product heads they need a lot of help they're very thin they're, you're limited on what you can do with them but all the problems that they have as far as performance uh it's a lot of work and you'd be really better off with a different head if you're trying to go 10 seconds in the quarter but well the price was right on these and as long as you have a dad that's willing to put hours in on something and you have a son that's willing to put hours in on something then you use budget stuff like this here and you do the best you can with it and then you see if you can uh, put that number down that you're looking for so anyway this is what we're going to wind up with the line of sight was terrible on this runner uh, where the push rod comes through it went very high and then it goes up and then back where in my opinion that air would be pushed to one side and pushed over and this would be a dead area which I don't want I want the whole runner to have air and fuel going through it so if I can knock this back and make this a straighter line of sight right there to the uh, valve then that's what I'm going to do so this is what kind of looks like when you first start out you'll wind up a little tiny hole and as you go back and forth with your bit it'll start breaking through so um, it doesn't look too pretty kind of scary when you first go through but uh I already know the outcome of this once we're done tubing it and finessing everything else and it'll be fine hopefully so uh, now we're working on these and I thought let me do a little video for these guys and the problem I have is that I've done actually three videos for you guys and every time I did the video I had a little noise distract me here and um, I wanted to show you guys what we're up to with these heads yeah I have a pump that keeps kicking on over here and it's right here in my ear so uh, in case you wonder what's he talking about um, anyway getting back on the heads here the world product heads there's a few people say they've done pretty well with these heads but I've seen these myself on a vehicle back in the day our friend had them and I believe the car ran 1350s so what <laughs> what good is actually putting them heads on out of the box if the car goes 1350s you can do that with a stock Chevrolet head uh, probably almost any head that they made with a little cleanup and if you have a fuely head uh, double hump head one of them in my opinion they're better out of, out 
of the box than these are. And that's because these have more areas around the guide in the seat area where it's pinched off and restricted and little bumps coming in, uh, your little casting flaws and things like that. Where the GM production factory heads are not as bad in my opinion. Now one guy did tell my son, no, I, I, they're better than a, a production head. Well, he might have ran better and he might know something I don't. Because some people, they'll put a factory head on and they'll go slow. Other guys can put a factory head on and go very fast. Depends on the person, depends on the cam, depends how heavy the vehicle is, depends if it's a stick car, if it's an automatic. All these things matter. So if somebody tells you something and say they've done well with something and you haven't, and you're like, no, that doesn't work, don't argue with them because save your argument because it could just as well be that you're the person that did well and telling the other person that it doesn't work and it could go either way some people don't they'll, they'll be like no that doesn't work and it might not work for them but it might work for you or vice versa does that make any sense did I explain that at all right so anyway guys this is what we're up to here i have twice as much time in these heads already as i thought i would and that's because my son called me up and we have some future plans here that are going to be a lot different than what i ever expected when i started out doing these heads they were going to be for one purpose only and that was to get the car to run 1050s and uh, but he has a few things uh, he's going to change up in the future here so now I'm more desperate than ever to make these heads as good as I can get them now I will say this Adam's let me have my way with these heads and I'm making more work for him too by having to tube these and I think we might have to put a a new valve job on this and I think they were okay I, I brushed the seats yeah when you can't see like me and you're using a drill it, it's hard believe me you, you wind up hitting things you're trying to get on angles you can't get on even with a die grinder you still do the same thing working under conditions I'm under here on a little table bent over I'm not making excuses I'm just explaining how easy it is to make a mistake like that and it's not terrible it might not need it when we check it but I'm just saying he might wind up with a little bit more money in these heads than he wanted but here's the thing getting back to what I was going to say he's letting me have my way for the most part but I'm only doing so much to these heads that will make them better and I'm pushing the envelope with them and I'm putting them on a danger zone around the guides and things like that because they're very thin but here's the major thing with these heads is this the exhaust port is so big I I asked Adam I said do you want to bother having me raise the exhaust port because he bought some aluminum and I said, if you have any left, I could actually just cut that, taper the runner, pound it in there. He could get his little old welder out and, and I could finesse it in. I think it would help a lot. He says, no. He says, it is what it is. Just do what we can. And uh, we'll see how it runs because that big exhaust port could really make this thing a dead dog, especially with an automatic vehicle and a, no gear and stuff you have to be really tactical sometimes with when you have certain uh, combinations when it's a low compression motor and things like that the more compression the harder you're turning it and things like that the more gear then you might not see it as much in a head if the head's like uh, on the side where it doesn't really perform well uh, it will kind of mask that because 
you have all the parts there to get the car moving, the gear, and if the motor turns up halfway decent, then you might not notice it. You might not know the difference, is my point, from a good head to a bad head if you're not familiar with racing and don't have an idea uh, what the car should do in the first place. So, anyway, I basically have a pretty good idea where this car should run. Now, we're shooting for 1050s in the quarter, quarter, like I said. On a normal, down the world, earth uh, scenario, however you want to say that, 1150s would be about where that car would be. But we think with some of the things we can pull off and a couple little tricks that we do, we're hoping that's going to creep us itself into the 10 second zone. And that would have been kind of okay, but now we're creeping towards the 1050 zone. So that makes it a little bit more crucial. So if you had the rest of the engine to accommodate it, 11 to 1 compression, uh, decent size cam, which it will have eventually, then that would be, uh, it would be where you would say, well, I could see that going that fast, I, you know. But the downfall is still, even if I throw everything at these heads, will they make the power? You can only do so much with something. Now I will say this, if it don't run the number, then it don't run the number. There's only so much you can do with a cylinder head. And if you do the right stuff to it, a head's only going to do what it's going to do, is what it comes down to. Now, in certain combinations, you can get more out of something that shouldn't do what is expected. Like, an E7 head, nobody would think a car would go 10s or 9s in most cases with an E7 Ford head. So we've pulled that off. So this should actually be a walk in the park, what we're doing here. But will it? You never know what you're going to turn up, turn out with when it comes to performance parts. Uh, you can have a speculation. Guys that have built motors in the past can build twin motors and one will outperform the other engine. They're like, why? Well, there's always a reason why. It's because there's always something that's going to be a tad bit different, no matter if you set the cam up the same, if you set everything consistently the same, according to numbers and by the book. This wind blowing me off my feet out here. It's one motor is always going to outrun the other one a, a little bit. It's always going to have a little bit different feel to it. A RPM is going to be a little bit different um, in most cases. I've seen where some of the cars uh, that were professionally done back in the day. Um, I can't remember what racer it was, but he took a spare engine out of, the car, out of his truck, threw it in the car. A backup engine and that engine went faster than the other engine did and this is done on a pro stock uh, scenario so keep that in mind it doesn't get much more technical than pro stock when you have twin engines and you go out there I think it was a whole tenth difference or so that's insane to think that would be a tenth difference with the engine done exactly the same so that's my point with this uh, so anyway I've done uh, a lot to these heads so far, and I still have a lot more to do, but uh, this is where we're at with it, and we're going to see what we wind up here, guys. Uh, we'll see if we wind up with the uh, car going 1050s, and even if the car runs 1070s, or if it goes anywhere in the 10s, can we really get mad at it? No. It's just nice to have a plan, and one thing we will do, my son and I will, <laughs> we always make it wear as hard on ourselves to reach that number. Like, <laughs> in most cases, it's be like, 
the other parts they got shouldn't really go that fast but it makes it worthwhile when you can pull that off and it makes you feel proud of yourself so I hope that made sense to you I lose my train of thought out here trying to uh, do these videos and everything I got a pump next door here keeps kicking on and that distracted me and I've had three videos in the trash so far but uh, just let you guys know I have distractions all the time when I do this on YouTube stuff so anyway I'll show you guys the head one more time and uh, it's getting there it does look a lot better than before I mean, I opened the bowls up, and like I said, I had a lot of imperfections here coming in to the uh, intake bowl here. A lot of ridges come up, casting marks, and all that's rounded in nice. And I cut the guide back on the exhaust, so that has a lot more bowl area than it did. But see. This is what I was talking about, how big the uh, exhaust ports are. Some guys might say that's not too bad. But if I raise the roof, or sorry, if I raise the floor on these, I've already raised the roof, is why I started to say some, even though they were big. I wanted the air to be able to come up nice and straight into the top here, being pushed out. And, uh, so if I raise the floor, I think that would actually be a lot better because I would have it where the air would come up and be pushed more towards the top and I could uh, contour that in how I want. But it's not terrible. We'll just see how it is once it's on the car and the engine's running and uh, then we'll take it from there. One thing I will say is this, if that engine doesn't run how we want it to, my son will surely make changes. We will make whatever changes necessary to, to make that vehicle do what we want it to do. Um, that's what we've always done in the past. So uh, I think this will just be another uh, learning experience really. Now we do run Chevrolets, a lot of guys don't know, they think we're all Ford Mustang guys. We do have Chevrolet stuff, and uh, back in the day, I did have some Mopar stuff. I, I just didn't really get into the Mopars too heavy because of the headers and a few things that really aggravated me with uh, certain uh, vehicles I stayed away from because of that reason. Fords were a pain with the headers too. But at least you could you could buy them cheap. Where most of your Mopar stuff was always a lot more money and things like that. So I like all brands. There, there's actually uh, I have a favorite car in every brand, believe it or not. Uh, we'll talk about that sometime. So anyway I know a lot of guys will watch a Ford guy work on some Chevy stuff and say, well, I know how that goes because a lot of guys don't know how to make but only one brand run. Uh, we've been pretty lucky. I'm pretty well-rounded when it comes to knowing the difference between what cubic gauge uh, engine likes what and the runner lengths of the intakes and how that from one brand to another. I, I do understand the concept behind all that when it comes to uh, making power. So, uh, cam timing uh, is crucial, and, uh, things like that. So, anyway, I was going to say, how hey, you make a Chevy fast? You can afford me to do it. <laughs> how many guys want to make me a saying that? I'm just joking. I can go either way <laughs> but anyway uh, that's where we're at with this and um, hopefully we'll get to see this thing up and running and uh, we'll see exactly 
if what I did works. Uh, I'll put it to you that way. If it's a dog, I'll take credit for it. And I'll at least know why that vehicle doesn't run the way that it should. Uh, a lot of guys get lost in to that. They're like, why don't this car run? We thought it would run this or that, and it doesn't do it. Usually we have a pretty good idea if it's in the converter, if it's in the gear ratio, the cam being degreed in wrong, if it needs to come up or be degreed in on a 106 or a 108 or 104. Uh, we're pretty decent with that stuff. So I guess I'd let you guys know that because, like I said, a lot of guys be like, well, they're doing a Chevy now. Let's see how that runs, you know. So I'll just put that out there for you guys that might think the old Ford guy, Ford man, might be lost. So I've had more GM cars in my life than I have Fords, I believe. If I had it on paper at one time, I had more Chevelles and things like that than I did uh, Mustangs at one time. So, don't get scared, you GM uh, hat wearing people. All right, guys, we're going to cut this loose here, and I got to get picked up out here. I'm losing my light, and uh, this stuff's taking me a lot more time than you would think the way that I have to do this. So, anyway, I want to thank you for watching. If uh, you're not subscribed, you like anything we're doing here, hit the old button. That gives me a little bit more incentive to do these videos, believe it or not. It gets a little uh, rough sometimes uh, to be able to do this. And if you have guys that are actually liking what you do and watching what you do, that gives you a little more incentive to do it. So I think anybody would understand that. So anyway, thanks again, and uh, God bless you. Take care.